Hello guys, welcome back to another Exercise to Houdini tutorial. And uh, in this one I'm going to talk about states. Uh, so I have these three states here. They get born in this one state and then they get triggered when the Y position is uh, smaller than 20. And then you go to this state, a force is added, uh, gravity in this case. And then it's uh, checking how long it's been in this state before it triggers the last state. So it would look something like this. Here you can see they go to that state and then after a certain time they go to the last state. I'm going to show you how to do this in Houdini. So here we are in Houdini and as you can see I have this particle emitter. So if we go into the pop source, uh, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a just born group. So the particles will be in this just born group on the first frame they are born and then they're going to get removed. Okay, so we have this group and I'm going to drop down a sub solver. And a sub solver makes it possible to work in a sub context within a DOP. And I'm going to drop down a wrangle, and I'm going to, in this group, I'm going to take the just born group that is born. So when the particles are born, they're going to be in this state, which will be the first state. So I'm going to do state, which is just my made up variable, and then I'm going to say one. And then I'm going to drop down another wrangle, and in here I'm going to set a timer, like how long has the particles been in this state. So I'm going to create a float call it time in state. I'm going to add one on every frame. So that's, that's done. Now we're going to drop down an attribute of op, like so. So just one thing though before we go on. If you look into a state, a state is basically just an if statement. Does this particle have this state ID? If so, then do all this crap. And otherwise, don't do it. That is the core of it. First, I'm going to create a trigger. I'm going to take a vector to float. I'm going to create the same trigger I had in XSI. So I'm going to take the point position and I'm going to take the Y. So I'm going to compare that. So if the Y is less than 2, then it's going to get triggered to state 2. And another thing that is a condition here is I'm going to do bind and I'm going to check the state. So I want to know that the state is state 1. So I'm going to do another compare, and then I'm going to see if the state is equal to 1, then this is true. So, and then I'm going to put it AND, so I can get these together. So here is the trigger. And now I need the IF block, drop down an IF block. And an IF block works like this. I put in a condition up here. If this condition is false, whatever is plugged in on this side will go out on this side. If it's true though, whatever will happen in this block will be outputted on this side. First we're going to check the state. So if it's not true, then I just want to keep the previous state. I'm going to plug that into this first one here. But if it's true, then I want to change the state. I'm going to change this to change it to the second, second state. And I'm going to plug that in here. And then I need another bind to write this out. So I'm going to do a bind export and I'm going to do state. And the second thing I want to do is I want to have the time in state. So I'm going to do bind time in state. I'm going to plug that into this. So if, if it's not true, just keep counting. But if it's true, then I want to zero the timer out. So I'm going to drop zero in the second one. And then I'm going to have a bind export, like so, time in state. So, this is basically the logic in a state. So if I want to wrap this up, I can, just, I can just select all this. And then I just click here. And now I have a little subnet. So I can call this state 1. And then I want to do this second state. Oh, state 2 is this actually. So I'm going to do the second state, that is state 3. I want this here to be 3. I'm going to plug that into here, and I need a new trigger. I'm going to copy this. And I want to know that this, it's in state number 2 this time. Uh, and then I'm, I want to check the time in state. So I'm going to do bind, time in state, and I'm going to compare that. Uh, and it will be greater than 24. And then I plug that into this. So I have a new trigger here. And this trigger, I'm going to plug that into this first port here. So now, if I haven't 
screwed up, the, the logic should be sorted for the state. So let's try this out. I, I got into the spreadsheet. I want to know the time and state. So let's see what happens. Yeah, it seemed to work. So you can see, like, every time when it's changed state, uh, the timer is zeroed. And now we're just going to visualize this. Now we're going to use the streams within Houdini to set up like different behaviors for, for the different states. So I'm going to drop down a pop stream. Drop down and merge. Merge in here. I need to connect this here and here. A pop color. And I'm going to call this state one. State one. And I'm going to copy this. Two, three. So what will happen now? We have this pop stream here. If they are in this stream, whatever is connected here will be affected. And if they are in this stream, whatever is connected here will be affected, and so on. So I'm going to change the color though, so we can see it's a little bit better. Uh, and I'm going to say maybe blue. I'm also going to add a force like I did in XSI. So I'm going to do a pop force. Pop force. And I'm going to do that to minus 4. Uh, and the only thing I need to do to get this to care about the states is if I go into the state here, you have this source group, and then I can write at state equals 1. For all particles where the state is 1, they will be in this stream. If I go to this one, and I make that 2. So whatever particle that has state equals 2 will be in this stream. And the same thing for this. That will be a 3. So now if we're going to play this, you can see we have the same thing. We have this one, the y value is not low enough, so they just keep going in state 1. These ones here, they are getting this force here, this pop force, because they're going into this pop stream. And the last one, they get triggered after the time in state uh, and go into that stream. So yeah, you can see it's not that difficult and you can you can of course build on this and do like a much nicer wrap up. I did a very very basic setup with this, but you can do a lot of things. I hope that you found this useful and uh, see you next time.